Numbers 21, 4 through 9. From Mount Hor they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became discouraged on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Friends, this is why the lectionary exists. The lectionary is a collection of readings that include an Old Testament, New Testament, Psalms, and Gospel reading each week in worship, and it goes on a three-year cycle. In that three-year cycle, you read all sorts of things, the famous scriptures that would come to mind um, for anybody who's regularly reading scripture, and also some things that feel very strange, things like this numbers reading. Now, there's a reason we don't often have a lot of Leviticus and numbers in our liturgical practices in church. We don't hear from those books very often because they can feel really foreign, really different, and they also engage in storytelling in a way that's different than our cultural practices. But they're important because they are an important part of the life of the Israelites. And they're important because they're part of the canon of scripture uh, that we believe God speaks through. And so what do we do with this text? Well, it's important for us to know that Numbers is after the Exodus. So we're hearing the story of the Israelites who've been set free from slavery in Egypt and who find themselves wandering around in the wilderness, chapter by chapter, complaining. When you read this text, you can at first think this is the first time they've grumbled. They've become discouraged. They've started to speak against Moses or Aaron. But if you read throughout Numbers, most of the chapters over and over include some instance of these folks grumbling. What we find throughout the book of Numbers is that chapter after chapter, the folks who are wandering in the wilderness keep grumbling about their present circumstances despite being freed from some pretty terrible circumstances pretty recently. Moses and Aaron and Miriam continue to lead the folks and chapter by chapter all throughout Numbers, we hear that folks over and over again are upset. They don't like the conditions. They don't like the food. They don't like where they are. They keep trying to find their own solutions and making their own solutions as a shortcut instead of waiting on God. What we find in this chapter is no different. Here they are, 21 chapters into Numbers, and they're still grumbling. Somebody pointed out at our Sunday evening service that their complaint is that they have no food and water and also that they don't like this miserable food. We humans are pretty similar across time and space, aren't we? They find themselves having been rescued by God, but not liking that their immediate circumstances are not all that they could hope and dream. The story is emblematic of that journey. They keep grumbling against God. They keep giving up on God. They keep disobeying God. They keep rebelling against the leaders that God has put in place in their community. And they keep forgetting that this is a God who's made a name for God's self by liberating them, by answering their prayers, by hearing their cries. And so they find themselves in the midst of circumstances none of us would choose. Now, whether these snakes are real and to be interpreted as an exact reminder of a historical event or sort of emblematic experience, what we know is that they grumble against God and they find themselves experiencing the circumstances of a difficult life. They find themselves upset that they don't have exactly what they want and then they have the consequences of turning against each other, against their leaders, against their community, and against the God who has carried them. And so God does this weird thing. God tells Moses to make a serpent out of bronze, and that serpent, when looked at, can remove the power of the venom in these poisonous snakes. Someone also pointed out in our evening service that the snakes are not taken away. 
What the folks pray for is that the hardship of the snakes will be gone. What they've been praying for is that the hardship of the wilderness and the wandering of the uncertainty would be gone. And honestly, I don't blame them. What God does is have them have to look face to face with the ways that they have tried all sorts of other solutions. And God removes the long-term consequences of their disobedience, but they still have the immediate discomfort of snakes amongst them. What we know is that God finds a way to take even the stuff that is not what we would intend, that is in our midst, evil wiggling its way around us, circumstances we would not have chosen, circumstances that sometimes are even the result of our own bad choices. And God finds a way to turn that upside down and use it as an act of our own redemption. This is, of course, what we believe about Jesus, that in the midst of the most violent and horrific and hateful way that the powers and principalities of this world could squash the good and the right and the holy in that moment on the cross, that God's beautiful and mysterious trickery of evil brings about our redemption, even in the place that feels like all hope is lost. Friends, this strange story invites us to be people who look up, who are face to face with the consequences of our choices, and who know and believe that God can find a way even now to trick evil and all that is not good into being a part of God's beautiful kingdom. May we be people on the lookout for God, pulling goodness and redemption and hope, even in the midst of all that is not good in our midst now. Amen. the poor